So it's no secret that out there on the market today, a swim bait is one of the most thrown baits out there. But don't you get tired of rigging it the exact same way on the same jig head that you throw every single time and getting it stuck in rock piles or getting it stuck on logs that we all do every time we throw it? Well, today I wanna to break down some of my favorite ways that I rig it that I think is gonna surprise you and help you lose less swim baits because as we all know, these things get expensive and then the less you lose, the better off you're gonna be in the long run. So I'm gonna break down my favorite ways to rig it right now. So because I know everybody is limited on time, I'm gonna start with my absolute favorite that is oddball first. I'm gonna start with a Tokyo rig first. And a Tokyo rig is a way that people do not traditionally rig a swim bait. For those of you who don't know what a Tokyo rig is, it's basically a heavy duty drop shot with a big hook on it. So what it is is a shortened version of a drop shot with a wire, you know, leader to your weight. And the way you rig that is you can put your favorite EWG hook on there and you can Texas rig this bait. So what this does is this allows you to Texas rig your bait and throw this thing in all types of situations. And where this really shines is when you're offshore fishing a swim bait. Because as we all know, firing up a group of fish offshore with a swim bait can be a phenomenal way to catch a lot of fish, catch big fish, and strictly just catch fish in general. A swim bait is known for catching numbers and size of fish both alike. So what this does is with this Texas rig and with the weight on the bottom, what it allows you to do is fish this through all different types of cover because when you're fishing offshore, you never know what you're gonna run into. There could be shopping carts out there, there could be laydowns, there could be rock piles. Sometimes you just don't know. And when you're fishing a swim bait on the bottom, when those fish typically are on the bottom, if you're fishing a traditional style head, what ends up happening? You throw it out there, it hits the bottom, and you go to reel it up, you try to hop it off the bottom, and it gets stuck right away. Or worse yet, you're reeling it along the bottom, and all of a sudden you run into a tree limb or a shopping cart or something dumb on the bottom, and you end up having to break your swim bait off. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure the sound of breaking line under the water is going to be a huge deterrent for fish. It probably sounds a lot like a gunshot to us because you've heard it when you break your line off and it's out in the open, it's that loud pow, and I'm pretty sure fish don't like that. So the less that we can do that, the better off we're gonna be. So when you rig that, you can now fish that along all different types of cover. You can fish it on the bottom, and with that weight being on the bottom instead of on the nose of that bait, what that allows that bait to do is have so much more kick and roll because now the weight isn't hindering the swim bait's action what it's doing is it's separate from the swim bait. So now the swim bait can do its own thing and really act as natural as physically possible. So that is just a great option that people do not ever try when you're trying to throw a swim bait. So that is tip number one on how I like to rig a swim bait. Let's dive into tip number two. So before I forget guys, for those of you guys that are new on the channel, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and follow along with all the new videos that are coming out every week. But let's get back in the way I rig it number two. So the second way that I like to rig this bait that people do not think about is a great finesse way to rig it. The way I like to do it is I nose hook it on a drop shot. And for those of you who don't really ever do this, what this does is that's the same thing that a Tokyo rig does. It gives you that finesse action where that bait has all the movement that it is made to have. Literally, you can't get any more movement than you have rigging it like this. But what this allows me to do is fish smaller swim baits like a 2.8 to a 3.3 and I can fish them for smallmouth or schooling fish offshore in a way that is super, super finesse style. I can fish it on seven pound line with a drop shot weight below it and I can just drag that nice and slow. So for those of you guys that love to smallmouth fish or fish offshore in areas where you're trying to find these fish, instead of having to throw a drop shot out there or use heavier line on a swim bait, and shake it or reel those swim baits down deep where you're having to worry about your line size, you can now do it in a finesse way that enables you to fish those small swim baits deep without having to throw a big weight on the jig head of those. So now I can just put a half ounce drop shot weight on there, rig it just like that, and I can fish those swim baits super deep in a way that those fish have probably never seen it before. I use this all the time up on the Great Lakes when those fish are out deeper to cover water. So this way I can throw it out there, and just drag it along the bottom. And this way you know you're on bottom because you can feel your weight dragging on the bottom, but you know exactly where your swim bait is. So you don't ever have to guess on where your bait is. So this just allows me to be so much more efficient at covering water in these finesse applications using these smaller swim baits and getting the most out of those swim baits. So the third way that I wanna talk about is something that works great during the spawn. Everybody loves to throw a swim bait during the spawn, but a lot of times you get those fish that slap at it 
and that big hook on top sometimes just doesn't get them. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to make a traditional swim bait a line through swim bait. All you have to do is go raid your mom's sewing cabinet, get a couple of sewing needles, and right now I have one with a ball on the end because what that allows me to do is I can tie my line around the end of that pin. So once I've tied my line around the end of that pin, all I have to do is take my swim bait, insert my pin directly center of the nose of that swim bait, run it down through to where I want it to come out on the bottom side, and now all I have to do is pull that line down through that swim bait. So once I've done that, I can tie my favorite treble hook on there, which allows me to throw the baits with the gear that I like instead of having to rely on somebody else's hooks. And now I can make my favorite swim baits a line through swim bait. So you can do this with Kitech 3.3s, you can do this with Z-Man diesel minnows, you can do this with all of your favorite small swim baits. And instead of having to go look for one, you can just make your own. So this allows you to make them on the fly. And you might ask, why would I want to make it a line through swim bait? It's a great question. The reason is I now have a treble hook on the bottom. So when those fish come up, because typically they come from the bottom and they swat at it, instead of having to worry about one single hook to go through the top, all I have to do is have that one treble hook point or the two or three that are on the bottom and they'll catch those fish every single time. The real key to this is I like to put a bead on my line before I put my treble hook on there. So I'll put a bead, a swivel, and then a treble hook because what that does is that allows me to have something that holds that line from trying to go back up into that swim bait. But it doesn't really matter. As long as you get that line through, you can figure out different ways that you like to rig that swim bait on there to help you catch more fish. So another one of my favorite ways to rig a swim bait, especially when I'm fishing shallow, is going to be Texas rigging it with a weedless underspin or just straight up Texas rigging it, allowing me to throw that bait around shallow cover without having to worry about getting stuck in anything. A lot of the weedless underspins come with a screw lock on the front of that hook, which allows me to just screw it into the front of that bait so that way I don't have to actually rig it. All I have to do is screw it into the nose of that bait, which gives me the most holding power on that swim bait. And this way I can fish it super weedless around anything up shallow. Z-Man also makes what's called a chin locks, which allows me to fish it weedless up shallow without having that blade on there. So this way, if I'm fishing down around the spawn and I wanna get those baits up super shallow or even in the summertime or when the shad spawn is going on, a lot of times those fish will get up into that grass and a really good way to target them when those fish have seen a lot of baits, if you're in crystal clear water, is using a swim bait. So using this different technique to get it up into the areas where those fish are at can be critical to having a great day on the water. And the last way that I wanna talk about is going to be your standard original style swim bait. But don't go away just yet because it's pretty important on how you rig this that most people don't think about. A lot of people just slap a swim bait on there and call it a day. Well, the critical piece of information that you have to have is making sure you rig that bait extremely straight because if you don't, it's gonna swim through the water at an angle and you're just not gonna get the amount of bites that you would normally get with a traditional style swim bait. It is also key when you rig it like this, I like to put a dab of super glue on the nose of that bait because what that allows me to do is once I thread it up onto there, that dab of super glue is just gonna hold that bait on there and allow me to catch five times more fish than I would typically catch on this swim bait. The bait itself will actually be falling apart before the rubber around the hook gets trashed. You guys also need to slide over and check out this video where I talk about what I wish somebody would have told me about rigging a swim bait like this. I dive in depth on how I rig this bait for fishing a spinning rod, fishing on a bait casting rod, everything that I wish somebody would have told me when I first started out. So God bless you guys and I'll see you in the next video.